Whoa. Oh, man. As you're probably used to, this one's brought to you by Element. I've said it over and over again, hydration's very important, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who've made the purchase of the Element, and they're super happy with it. So I'm gonna let Rob tell you his story, because I think it's a pretty cool one. Element's legit. So let me tell you a little story. Uh, I got my first EKG that I've ever had, and I was eager to get the results, and my doctor called me back in to tell me that it was abnormal which had me very concerned. But what she said was she thought it might be a hydration problem. And so first thing I did was call my little bro, Rich, who's pretty well versed in hydration issues. And he recommended that I hyperhydrate with some element. So I had three days for the rescheduled EKG. I pounded that element on the regular every day. And when I went in for my new EKG, the results were All right, there you go. You heard it from the man himself. Um, pretty cool story, Glad Element helped. If you wanna get yours, hit the link below, www.drinkelement.com forward slash Rich Drew. So drinklmnt.com forward slash Rich Drew. You'll get yourself a free eight flavor sample pack so you can decide which one you like best when you make your order. And if the chocolate medley's still available, I'd grab it because I love to mix one up nice and warm to start my cold mornings. Cut. Mm. All right, a question we get asked very commonly is SRAM transmission. Is it worth it? We're about to break it down. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, SRAM transmission. Uh, not super new, but still something that not widespread. Not everybody's coming with it. It's still I, the latest greatest. The latest greatest. I've, I've recently upgraded, so I would say... 90% of my bikes now have it. Rob, you got quite a few bikes. How many of yours have transmission? Only two of my bikes have transmission. Everything has access, but only two have transmission. How many bikes do you have? Nine bikes. Nine bikes. And you've been riding bikes for a long time? Long time. When you started, what was the uh, drivetrain setup? I think it was uh, like tree limbs tied together and rocks chiseled <laughs> out to make sprockets yeah okay yeah, it was old it was different it was much different so let's get your take because right now you consistently ride not only a transmission but regular access regular access and you bounce back and forth yeah so when access came out you know i told myself you don't need this and i still would say that's probably true but i i had to buy a box of cable and change my shifter cable every 30 days because once the cable gets dirty it won't downshift and it becomes a headache. You, you're adjusting it with the barrel adjuster and pulling your hair out because the thing won't downshift. Double downshift to shift back up. And once you put Axis on, those issues just go away. Nice. Yeah. So Axis taking care of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but you're in the land of boulders. You're yep. in an area that uh, derailers are frequently compromised. Yeah, stuff so can get smashed. Well, with the with the one of the advantages of the new transmission is the double shear mount. So it's quite a bit stronger than the old setup where you could, you could compromise the hanger. Uh, okay. That. So now, now we're getting to it. Um, let's talk before we get there, serviceability performance. So from a performance standpoint, just plain and simple, yes, no answer. Is it superior to access? On the e-bike, I would say it is because it's designed to shift under load very precisely. And, and I like that feature, but it's not as fast to shift as the previous axis was. Like if you got to dump three gears for something, the, the previous axis is gonna do it quicker. Yeah. Uh, but if you're on an e-bike uh, set in boost and you want to shift going up a hill, the transmission will shift flawlessly. So that kind of segues into my thoughts on it. And one thing that I, kind of summarized was, okay, you can shift under power. Awesome. I won't because I'm old school and I've taught myself never shift under power. Yeah. I, so I typically will not shift under power, but the e-bike sometimes is making, 
85 newton meters of power even if you're not laying any heat into it so that's power that's a, that's that's shifting under load whether you intend to or not so have you found that if you shift under a little bit of power sometimes it actually shifts better the transmission that is the transmission likes to shift under power yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so now we'll talk about serviceability and this is something that i had heard didn't have any intimate knowledge with until this happened Whoa. Oh, man. That was spectacular. Still recording? Yeah. Dude, I can't miss out on that. Dang, bro. I think you came up a little shown. Dude, it didn't seem that bad. It didn't seem that bad, but it was apparently bad. Oh, he's going to freak out. Yeah, what's a bummer is that derailleur got weeded. To hit the ground. <clears throat> Hopefully we can straighten it. Genius. Insert clip here. Yeah, insert <laughs> clip here. All right, so as you can see, catastrophic wheel failure, which is pretty rare. It's the first time I've ever done it. Yeah, and, and, and a wheel failure so substantial, you sat the freaking derailleur into the ground. I didn't think about that. Uh, I was bummed out about the wheel, and Rob so kindly informed me, dude, you bent your derailleur cage. Now, let's go back to Axis. Ben, ben and broke your cage. Ben and broke my cage. If that was an Axis derailleur, what's the prognosis? I think it's a new derailleur. I don't believe those things are serviceable that way. Yeah, as far as I know, they're not serviceable. So we're talking, what, five, four or five hundred bucks maybe? Actually, I think you could buy the, the cage pieces separately. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's say the, you can. Like the cages with the jockey wheel. Let's say you can. Yeah. Without a doubt, in this particular scenario, what does it take? To repair it? Yeah. It's like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it took awesome. me uh, 169 bucks yeah. and about 30 seconds. Yeah. So right. let's, hang on. Okay. Let's show everybody what that looks like. Okay, here we have the Delano Peak all taken apart. There's what's left of the wheel. And here is all the pieces. All right, so go ahead and break it down, dude. Well, here is the derailleur. So you can see, you know, broken here, tweaked. Uh, but the way that they designed this thing, if it wasn't so bent, you know, I had to take it apart because it was bent, but normally you can just unscrew this and it comes right off of the derailleur. So like five seconds and it's off. Okay. So here's the new piece. You know, $149.99 retail plus tax. And this is what you get is the whole thing, jockey wheels and all. And you can see it's already spring loaded. You basically take this guy, you stick it in here and turn it. Whoops. Cut. Yeah. Take two. So you take this piece, insert it into the derailleur. Actually make sure it gets started and then turn it, and that's it. You're Wait done. Just that simple? Just that simple, you're done. So yeah, when it's, when it's not damaged, if you wanted to take it apart, just turn it counterclockwise, and it has fat threads, comes right out. So in regards to cage compatibility, what did our buddy Jason Blodgett say at SRAM? This piece will cross over the whole line, so whether you have GX or XX, this replacement piece will go in all of them. And this one is an XX, so I can confirm that to be true. Yeah, so there it goes. And, and your derailleur is fixed. Pretty simple reinstall and back in the game, right? Absolutely. So from a serviceability standpoint, would you agree transmission superior? I think transmission is a step up from regular access from the serviceability standpoint. There you go. So what was pretty painful yeah. uh, originally turned out not be that bad. i 9s already on top of the warranty of the wheel. And for anybody out there, because I've had a few people ask, dude, didn't you have Cush Core? Cush Core wasn't going to help that. That was a bad scenario. Yeah, when I you, just, when just you hang it on a rock like that, the wheel has no defense. So now we'll get the back bike, to get, bike, bike back together, uh, get out, rip some more laps. Hopefully I won't do the same thing. So... There you go. Transmission, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And I agree with him. Is it a need? 
I don't think it's a need, but it's really cool looking, performs well, and from a serviceability standpoint, incredible. Yeah, well, I would say if you're sold on the regular access, if you have the regular access, what's gonna happen is when you go to buy a new bike, you're probably gonna get it. I mean, you, you won't be able to get it with the old access anymore. It'll be with the transmission. So yeah. I think that's the way people are gonna transition into it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a substantial purchase if you're just buying the group set to upgrade. And unfortunately, you have to get the whole group set. It, it, you can't mix the components with the old access. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So there you go. Hopefully that provides a little bit of insight. If you have questions, drop them down below. Rob, probably more than likely happy to answer. And then on top of that, if there's any other insight like this you want, maybe breakdowns on certain products. Yep. Um, how to install how to or how install, to fix things or... like that. We can certainly do that. I'll be here for a few more weeks. I got a great set of tools. Prime time. And he's got some hands to work with those tools that are really well. So there we go. Thanks to Element for sponsoring this one. We're going to go drink some. Yeah. Because we had a ride series clinic today. If you want to come to one sun. of those, check the link down low and uh, we'll see you next time. How do you end them, Rob? Until next time, over and out. Over and out. And peace out. Dumpers. Dumpers. <laughs>